be solved by just returning to the Constitution. That's Ron Paul has told us so eloquently so many times. I mean, in this bailout thing, he looks like a like a genius now. He was a coot a month ago, but now he's a genius. You know, and he's been talking about these same issues for decades and warning us that they were coming. And all of a sudden, here they are. Uh, but the first issue I want to talk to you about is uh, what's come to be called immigration or uh, the border, if you will. But in the Constitution Party, we don't think it's too much to ask that people who want to come to America come legally and obey our laws while doing it. And so we, uh, we would propose that our, our laws regarding the secure border be enforced, uh, and that could be done. Of all these issues, it's the easiest one to solve. It's completely within the province of the president. I mean, he, uh, our theory is he could basically provide border security to us with one phone call if he really wanted to, but he doesn't have the political will or whatever to do it. I was on the border on the 4th of July. I went to the border about 70 miles east of San Diego with uh, some Border Patrol people. And I gave a speech there from the back of the pickup truck. Uh, and they took me on a tour of the border and they showed me where the drug cartels come through and the fact that they have, they own land now on both sides of the border, which they use as staging areas for their human trafficking and for their drugs and so forth. It's a terrible situation that could be solved. Uh, the method is there for doing it. You know, we would we would certainly solve it. I can assure you of that, one way or the other. Uh, we would use as much force as is necessary to solve it, uh, which I don't really think would be that much. But Article Four of the Constitution says that the federal government is required to defend this country from invasion. Actually, says to defend the states from invasion. And that's something that obviously that this government has fallen woefully short of. Uh, so that's one issue, the North American Union included in the same issue, really. But it is a uh, creation in the mind of George W. Bush and the former uh, president of Mexico, Vincente Fox, who turned out to be uh, one of our best friends on the issue, really, because uh, when people would say, oh, it's just a conspiracy theory, it's not really going to happen, uh, it's not really part of our plans, you know, uh, President Fox quite openly said, oh, yes, it is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's something we're working for. We're going to do it. And even now, uh, the new president of Mexico, uh, Felipe Calderon, says the same thing. I read the other day where he said, no, this, we really need this union between uh, Canada, Mexico, and the United States. So that, too, could be stopped with a phone call by just picking up the phone and calling those two fellows, Steve Harper from Canada and Mr. Calderon from Mexico, and say, look, guys, uh, we started this idea, but the American people aren't going to have it, so it's over. Let's think of something else. End of story. Uh, but, um, once again, uh, Neither Senator Obama or Senator McCain is going to do that. I mean, they both say that they favor amnesty. They both say that they want to bring back the amnesty bill recently defeated in Congress. Uh, so we can we can conclude from that that they're not going to secure our border. If that were all, it would be plenty. But there's more. Uh, during the Democratic convention, I was out in Denver, and I spoke at a, a protest rally out there. I may be the only person who spoke at both conventions, I don't know, but uh, we had a rally about the border, and uh, Tom Tancredo was one of the speakers, and I had a chance to talk to him about these issues, because I know he's been in the forefront of them. Uh, unfortunately, he's wrong about a lot of things. Uh, he's wrong about the bailout, he's wrong about the war, but he's right about immigration. Uh, so I talked to him, and he told me this story. There's a man that uh, Senator McCain carries on his uh, personal staff. He calls him his liaison to the Latino community. And uh, this man's name is Juan Hernandez. And he's a former cabinet level official in the Mexican government. And he, uh, he held a ministry in Mexico, apparently. The, the cabinet is called a ministry rather than a cabinet. His ministry was called the Ministry to uh, Mexican People Living in the United States. 
So the congressman said, well, Mr. Hernandez, tell me, what's that ministry do and what's its purpose? He said, well, uh, you know, here in America you have these day labor sites where people who need work go and they wait and the people who have work for them to do come pick them up and take them to do the job and at the end of the day they take them back. So, you know, we're aware of that. So, well, in Mexico what we did was we would take buses around to these sites where people were out of work and we loaded them up on buses and we took them up to the border and we said, go across and get jobs in America and send the money back to Mexico. And that accomplished three things, all good. Uh, it gave us uh, tens of billions of dollars of income every year to the Mexican economy. It relieved our unemployment problem. And you guys got uh, cheap labor out of it, so it worked for everybody. Anyway, that man is, uh, is Senator McCain's personal liaison uh, to the Latino community. So I, from that, I conclude that he plans to do nothing about the border situation except make it worse. Um, so that's one issue. If we move on from there to uh, a simpler issue, maybe more difficult to solve, but simpler in many ways, and that is the issue of energy, which I devoted a great deal of time to early in the campaign, this campaign because I had a theory that we could achieve energy independence in America if we wanted to, and that if we did, that would be a good thing because it would free us from blackmail and intimidation by the people that we import oil from now. And it would free us from the excuse of using our children to go abroad, uh, killing people and being killed in order to protect oil routes and uh, sources of supply. So I set out to investigate whether this really could be done or not. Uh, and I talked to five or six different companies that are in the business of producing energy, some of them alternative type energy, some of them with these new clean uh, uh, companies that, that uh, are working now in that field. And I talked to the largest uh, coal gas company in the world, which coincidentally is located in my hometown in East Tennessee, uh, Eastman Chemical. But the conclusion of these companies was yes, it could be done. And it can be done, but we need certain things in order to do it. It can be done in an, entire, an environmentally clean fashion now. There's, the technology is so far advanced in America now that we haven't been able to use it very much because we can't build here. Our nuclear technology is 37 years old, and that's ancient history in the energy world. Uh, right now, the nuclear engineers from America are in France building the most modern plant in the world. France gets 78% of its electricity from nuclear. And it's, the, the technology is there now. The, the fears that we once had about nuclear energy really uh, aren't appropriate anymore because of this new technology. They may be here because our plants are 37 years old and older. But there, they're not. There are also American engineers who are building plants in Russia and China because there's no work for them here. Now, other sources of energy, uh, coal, uh, can be done in a clean fashion. That's what Eastland Chemicals is doing, converting coal into liquid fuel. I mean, I don't care how much, how many wind uh, towers you build, you can't fly a jet airplane on wind. I mean, you have to have liquid fuel to continue our civilization as it is today. So all of this, my conclusion was it could be done and it should be done, but it won't be done. That's the bad news. And the reason I say that is because, once again, if you look at these two gentlemen that are running and have the most obvious chance to win, just listen to what they say. They talk about it. They say they're going to do it. Uh, once again, uh, whoever said it, I can't remember who said it now, but one of the previous speakers said there's very little difference between them. Well, I mean, they, uh, they look different. They're, their skin color is different. One of them is older, but their agendas are almost identical. I mean, on this issue, they both favor the uh, climate change control bill, which was recently defeated in the Senate. They both say they're going to bring that back, and they want to pass it. That would commit us to a course of action that would make energy independence impossible to achieve. And it would commit us to a continuation of imported fuel until we achieved what they believe, at least they say they believe we could do, which is achieve some degree of independence through